Hey, it's Brian Mudd. This is my cheat sheet for Tuesday, January 15th, and it starts with Java. Uh, you might remember yesterday I mentioned that uh, there was a patch that if you had Java on your computer, you needed to make sure this uh, patch was installed as quickly as possible. There was an international hack attack over the weekend so severe that the Department of Homeland Security actually had come out and said that you needed to disable or delete Java from your computer. Well, Sunday afternoon, evening, uh, Oracle, which is the the uh, owner and developer of Java, uh, actually came out with the patch, and they said, you know, this should fix the vulnerability. Well, the Department of Homeland Security came back again yesterday and said, not so fast. They are recommending that even with the patch, you disable or delete Java from your computer. They believe that there are still potential vulnerabilities that can leave your computer susceptible to be being taken over, which means completely compromised, including what you would search and otherwise. So this is a pretty significant consideration. It's up to you as to whether you heed the government's advice, obviously. But, uh, you know, it's highly unusual that the Department of Homeland Security would actually speak uh, regarding software and the software program that you might have on your computer. Um, Walmart. You know, so often we talk about Walmart or a lot of other big businesses. Uh, they they get, they catch the negative headlines when people are complaining about them. Very rarely are some of the more positive stories told. And while I personally prefer to shop at local businesses, businesses big and large make this economy go, employ people, and are part of the solution in this country. Walmart uh, it announced a plan to hire 100,000 vets over the next five years. They're going to begin this starting Memorial Day and. Uh, What's significant about this is twofold. I mean, obviously, one, it's, it's very good for those vets, and anybody who's qualified, um, you know, is not necessarily going to be de denied. So, uh, you know, it's almost like guaranteed job placement for uh, returning vets. But uh, the unemployment rate, actually the highest among returning vets, 29%. It's a staggering number. And so uh, this ought to, you know, go some ways towards helping that overall solution. And I applaud the companies that do step up to the plate and make a concerted effort to be there for uh, our returning veterans who protect our freedoms and allow companies like Walmart and ours uh, for us to be able to operate and, and bring you what we bring you, right? All right, so the Bookless Library. Very theoretical. It's just about 18 months ago that you even had e-reading begin to make its way into the library system. And now, uh, most libraries around the country do have some adaptation of e-reading. Uh, throughout the Palm Beaches, Treasure Coast, most libraries are on board with at least some e-reading. Well, we actually in Texas are seeing uh, one particular county, Bexar County, uh, actually considering taking a library completely bookless, the first complete e-reading public library. And they say that it's clear that the trend is in and that the younger generation will not be adhering to the physical books. So they are getting there sooner. And they think that this will end up being, uh, you know, a model for other parts in the country. And so uh, it's not guaranteed that they're going there yet, but they are considering it this week. Could be interesting to see uh, just how quickly e-reading is taking over traditional uh, reading. And also, uh, you know, I will continue to be an advocate for e-education. Uh, I would like to see us go to e-books and e-readers in the public classroom setting uh, because I think it's a better way to communicate with kids in a way that they want to be communicated with and I think it'll help the overall educational process. Um, let's talk about, just for a moment, the poverty situation. So, in a recovering economy, you would think that the overall rate of poverty would be declining, right? I mean, surely, if an economy is recovering for years, the number and percentage of those in poverty would continue to decline. Well, not so fast. Currently, uh, poverty is defined by the federal government at $22,811 with a family of four. Okay, so that's the number we're talking about. The overall percentage of the U.S. population that falls into this category. You ready for it? At the start of the recession, the number was 28%. Fast forward to 2010, we were up. Remember, the recovery began in 2009, right? But in 2010, the number was up to 30%. 31 is about 31%. And now today, the number, 33%. We got one-third of the population that's actually living in poverty now in this country. And how many years into the recovery are we? See, this is all part of the bigger story that I so often talk about, which is uh, we've got to grow the economy. We've got to stop worrying about all the assistance programs and expansion of them. 
And we've got to get back to the real assistance program, which is pro-growth policies from Washington that allow companies to make good decisions, be able to take risks, expand, hire people, and more importantly, even income growth. Because here's the other thing. Uh, income growth has been basically eroded by inflation over the past several years. And uh, we, first of all, will have the average person that's out of work, out of work for about 11 months. But when they get a job, we all we do is take a look at the unemployment number. And, you know, the number from the government's highly unreliable because if you're not uh, on unemployment, you're not counted. So once you fall off unemployment, if you still don't have work, they don't count you anymore. It ta doesn't take into consideration part-time people that want to be working full-time, the underemployment rate. And the other thing doesn't take into, into account is the wage that you're earning. So the average person that loses their job and gets a new one makes a third less money. Makes a third less money. And that is aiding the overall poverty problem despite the theoretical economy that we have playing out here. Bottom line is we need a healthy economy. And that comes with better policies, not more government programs that we can't afford. Because these assistance programs are just assisting more people into poverty. That is the cheat sheet for today. Make some stuff happen in your own life, and we will see you tomorrow.